Welcome back to the Get A Brew channel. So today I'm joined by James and Matt's with us and we're going to shine a light on SureShot. This man needs no introduction. He has a wealth of experience and hopefully he's going to share some tips and tricks and advice for the brewing community. Uh, we're going to go next door because there's active production going on in the brewery and uh, chill out in the tap room with a beer. So come and join us. So James, we're in your tap room. Good afternoon. Tell us a little bit about SureShot, how it came about. Hey, well, SureShot is uh, myself and my business partner, Mike, Michael Ford, uh, who, like so many uh, breweries, we met at IMBC yeah. a good few years back yeah. uh, and had a drink, you know, got on. Uh, my background is brewing. I've been, I don't actually know how to do anything else anymore. Yeah. Uh, Michael's background, he's a businessman who's involved in, he's been involved in bottling wine uh, in quite a big way. Yeah. Uh, and uh, shared interest in beer. Okay. Uh, and come together in Manchester to make nice beer. Yeah. Honestly, our uh, basic thoughts are uh, beer's a product's meant to be enjoyed. Uh, so uh, that's what it's all about. Just make the best beer we can yeah. and uh, see if we can make some people happy. So. You have been involved in beer for a long time. You were telling me earlier you started in Tipperary. Oh no, no. no? Before that, I started, started in Sheffield. Sheffield, Sheffield right? with the Firkins. That's right. So there to Ireland, multiple locations well, there. Then you came to Marble. Marble, Marble yeah. in 2000, 11th of December 2000. Yeah. In Marble. Uh, I was there for about 13 years. Yeah. Uh, then I did a, a year of consulting. Uh, whilst we were setting up Cloudwater, yeah. uh, so I was there as a co-founder and head brewer for, and I was there for three years. Yeah. Uh, left there, uh, went to SSV uh, all over the country uh, and uh, did uh, was involved heavily in Dea, uh, Verdant, Boxcar, a good few others. Uh, an impressive CV to say the least. Yeah. Brains, I brewed Dark Mild Yeah. and Brains. <laughs> many years ago yeah you know, so uh, that was uh, yeah very interesting job is this your best work to be at sure shop I like to think so yeah, yeah. I, th I think really it's the people who were uh, drinking the beer can uh, probably better place to tell me that yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let them do the critique let, you'll let the beer do the talking yeah basically what you're saying. yeah, yeah. No, I like that yeah um, your talent is clearly in hot forward beers in relation to making a hazy beer because that's yeah. the beer that's on trend at the minute the hazy yeah. hoppy beer how do you get so much flavor packed into it put a lot of hops in it that's that's really it's, it's long and short but I, I basically i would say brewing a hoppy beer is like any other beer uh if your yeast is happy yeah uh, and you you've got a good quality yeast and you've got happy yeast then everything else should fall into place yeah. uh the thing about putting the right hops in at the right time uh that's just experience but that's like making a recipe is uh, really I think is secondary to yeah. the effect of running the fermentation so if you've got uh, happy yeast you've got happy beer you've got happy customers yeah and uh, you know everybody's happy it's great <laughs> that's what we want are you a fan then of whirlpool hop additions large dry hop additions or a combination of all I'm I think we could just draw a line under it and in favour of hop additions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, with hoppy beer, it, again, it depends very much on the beer. Uh, I've always found for lower strength uh, pails, uh, more in the more in the whirlpool. Yeah. Uh, for cask beers, you know, you've got a fairly delicate cask beer. Uh, using whole leaf hops uh, yeah. makes quite a big difference. You get a uh, bit more body, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. But with if you, you're kicking things, you're going harder with the hops. A whirlpool addition really helps. Uh, a large, a large whirlpool addition with the lower strength ones. Yeah. I find you get you get a different uh, personality from the hops. Like let's say mosaic, for example. If you throw that in the uh, kettle or in the whirlpool, you'll get a very different presentation than you would in the finished beer from dry hopping post fermentation. Yeah. Again with. Uh, dry hopping during fermentation you get a different presentation if uh, when I first started dry hopping in fermenter 
uh, it was always towards the end of fermentation, not propping the yeast. Yeah. You know, uh, with that you get a bit more scrubbing. I find so you uh, you may lose some of the intensity, but I would say you get probably a more refined what I call a West Coast aroma. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you want a big juicy hazy thing, post fermentation additions you get less scrubbing, so you keep more of the uh, more volatile uh, aspects of the hop. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just get that big juicy hit. Yeah. You know. Uh, Any. It's more like smelling a bag of hops than uh, you get if you throw it in the kettle, yeah. for example. Any preferred temperature to do that large dry hop? Um, ooh, it depends on yeast. Okay. Uh, I've seen different people do it differently. Uh, what you will get with uh, large dry if you haven't got a fully completed fermentation, you'll uh, there, there's a couple of things that happen when you add hops at the end. Uh, you're adding particulate matter, so you've got a nucleus for fermentation, it, you know, reinvigorate fermentation. Yeah. Uh, so if you've got anything in there and you've got active yeast in there, it will carry on fermenting. Uh, the other thing you can get, particularly if you're using T90 pellets rather than uh, a hop product, yeah. uh, there's uh, enzymes entrained in the leaf matter, uh, which you will get in the pellets, uh, and they'll break down any residual starch. Uh, yeah. That residual starch will then perform a small re-fermentation, uh, and that, if it's sluggish, the yeast is tired, will uh, generate diacetyl. Yeah. Uh, if your yeast is not sluggish and not tired, uh, that will uh, just ferment out yeah. and give you lovely hoppy beer. Yeah. Uh, but if you start getting off flavours, even if you've got diacetyl behind, beneath your flavour threshold, that will. Uh, I think sort of dulls the dulls the edge of the beer. You don't get yeah. as brilliant a presentation. Yeah, you know. So uh, it's like yeah, yeah. Happy yeast. Keep <laughs> uh, the yeast happy. Yeah. Yeast to keep the critical control yeah. point. Yeah, really. which is uh, good cropping practices, uh, good yeast handling practices, uh, and making sure you've got some zinc in there, some ionic zinc. Yeah. Uh, really makes all the difference in the world. You can see it if you start adding a little bit of zinc to your fermentations, uh, you can see it at your uh, end of fermentation cell counts, there's a lot less blue. Yeah. Uh, so blue cells being uh, things that are stained with the uh, methylene blue stain, which yeah. shows unviable yeast. Yeah. Uh, you get a lot less of that for a lot longer with if, you've got, if your zinc's right. Yeah. You know, uh, makes all the difference in the world. The thing that makes the biggest difference in the world is the yeast you put in in the first place. Yeah. You're throwing a sick dog, it's just going to choke. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Very good, so. yeah. Quality ingredients is always, you yeah. know, if, if you start with a good base, you're always, yeah. you know, you're starting with a head stuff. Yeah. You know, so. Good yeast, good yeast, give it good words. Yeah. Um, and then with temperature, which was the question you did ask, that I promptly refused to answer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, 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 I trade secrets. Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> no, I just didn't get round to it. Yeah. He's getting there. He's getting there. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, uh, what? I mean, keep an eye on your yeast is one thing. You keep an eye on your pH and you keep an eye on your cell count. Is if you're trying to develop your own methodology, but uh, I would suggest uh, lowering the temperature, preserve the glyc glycogen. Okay. Uh, so you're lowering from fermentation temperature when it's finished, when it's reached terminal, lower the temperature, preserve the glycogen a bit because if you are going to get that re-fermentation you want active yeast, not something that's used all its energy reserves and it's just going to uh, choke out. Okay. Uh, you want something that has still got a bit of uh, residual energy. Yeah. yeah. So you're but still not giving us the temperature, you're just dancing around that topic can I see that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well I am but I, I gave you a relative answer <laughs> relative relative to your fermentation yeah so well, me for example the yeast I'm using currently I would uh, drop from 20 degrees at terminal yeah. uh, for most beers uh, down to 16 okay and then I would dry hop at 16 once you've cropped so crop dry hop yeah hold that for a day yeah or two days check for diac uh, lower it maybe down to 12 for another day yeah uh then fire that down to zero carbonate yeah up to your uncle yeah you know what's your favorite hop style oh not so fun yeah yeah i mean just let's let's just 
cut straight to the chase. Yeah. People have opinions about it, but it, to me, it's the most impactful. Uh, also, on a good day, a really elegant hop. Yeah. You know, this was something that I always thought about uh, the difference between American hops and New Zealand hops. Uh, I've got quite a big thing for New Zealand hops. I thought American hops are great. They've got intense aromas, all right. They've got a bit jazz hands, you yeah. know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, whereas you know something like Nelson Seven, something yeah. like Motueka has elegance, yeah. has poise. You yeah. know, it, there's a beautiful aroma. Yeah. Handled badly or a, a bad uh, batch of it, rubbish as any other rubbish. You yeah. know, but yeah. you know, on a good day, it's the best. Yeah. You know, that's my thing. Of course, I use an awful lot of Citra. Yeah. You know, because. Well, it's, it's, it's a great it, hop as well. Yeah, it, well, it's like adding brown sauce to food. It makes stuff taste nice. Yeah. You know, so. I've never heard that analogy before. Yeah. Yeah, I got good. that from Dominic from Thornbridge. Oh, okay. you know, it, was, it was telling a French chef how to make dinner. Yeah. You know, so. yeah. James, you've been around the Manchester scene for a long time. Yeah. And you've seen it change immeasurably yeah. over that time. Why do you think it's become such an incredible city for beer with you know everything from the family brewers through to modern brewers like yourself that's just a couple of years old why is manchester being such a great incubator for that well it, i think it's got i think it's broader than beer i think that's a lot to do with manchester it's a very energetic city you know it was uh, of the two places i've lived i lived in brighton and i've lived in manchester and there are the places i've considered actually settling you know that there's a uh, it's a very vibrant city. Uh, there's uh, it has a lot of get up and go about it. It's quite warm. It's quite well. It's warm, I say. You know, not today, but em- sometimes. Emotionally warm, I say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's freezing today, you know. But uh, it's quite an embracing city, uh, and it's got a lot of energy about it. So the energy that's gone into you into the growth that you see around the city at the minute, uh, that's also gone into its food and drink scene as well. Uh, and yeah you know uh, also had a really good start from a really good base yeah you know, it's always had a good beer scene you know going right back to Brendan Dobbin you know sort of one of the uh, yeah big innovators of modern yeah beer brewing scene. with American hops in the late 80s you know yeah. what, you know people think that that's a relatively new thing from the past two decades but yeah goes back a bit further than that and then you have people like Pictish I guess yeah that was in the 90s wasn't it yeah that was Richard Sutton he was a uh, he sold it sometime but he was uh, I worked with him at the Firkins many years ago I think he uh, sold up and has gone caving in Spain or something like that <laughs> That's his, uh, that was his passion you know yeah. it's uh, rock climbing and caving you know so well uh, didn't he do well you know there you go. great beers again Phoenix uh, great brewery still going uh Tony yeah. Allen was, you know, a great innovator, uh, made some great beers. Uh, when I first came to Manchester, that was, they were the ones to watch, you yeah. know. It's a lovely, well-made pale ales, lots of hops. You yeah, know, uh, still lovely as well. Yeah. Um, one thing I do want to ask you as well is, where do you come up with the names for the beers? Because uh, oh, it's, it, your tap room staff love it. I know when when people come in to uh, order a beer and. They have to put together a whole paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so basically, we, we, we've got WhatsApp group. Well, Slack, actually. Uh, but basically, people have to give a na- beer name and the reference. It's usually some kind of po- popular culture reference. Uh, yeah. And we have a... We then get to a, a committee of three people. There's me, James Lever over there, and Michael. Uh, and uh, we just go through them, see what uh, we can work with artistically, what we makes us laugh, uh, what we think rings true, and what we think will resonate with people. Uh, and it usually tends to be something quite funny. Yeah, Nil Bog Milk is my favourite, yeah. definitely. Trolls too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Trolls too, I can't even remember. I don't know. No, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much how we do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do people get sure shot beers so we have a big audience that watch our stuff from yeah. all over the place so online yeah it's uh one way come here come come come, come here yeah, yeah. we're friendly i would say this is probably the best half square mile in the country for this type of beer for definitely for hazy beer yeah uh, spoiled really yeah uh 
But that helps make the, you mentioned this earlier, it helps make, makes the quality of beer in the city better because there's so much high quality beer it's yeah. forcing the breweries to become oh uh, yeah well you, you don't want to be the crap one no, no. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants don't to be the guy, that guy over there <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah no it really is good it's good to have uh, i mean a, a rising tide to say floats old boats yeah uh, and the local we've got track we've got cloud walk we've got balance yeah uh, we've got manchester union live just down the road yeah uh, and all producing really good quality of beer uh yeah. And that, I think that really helps. It dr- brings people to the area. Uh, it gives you a, a group of peers around you as yeah. well. You know, it's a, it's a very friendly scene. Yeah. So uh, you've a wealth of experience in brewing, right? Brewing consultancy, installing brewing equipment. If someone's watching this and they're thinking of starting their own brewery. Have you any top tips that you would give them? Uh, think long and hard. Do the job for a bit. Yeah. Uh, and uh, make sure you're well financed. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's good advice. Yeah. But do the job. Yeah. You know. And don't underestimate any trade that isn't your own. Yeah. yeah that's also work and it's really hard. Yeah. It's not, you know, uh, sales is a real job. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, qu- I quite liked earlier when I asked you, you had the boots on, and it's like, were you brilliant today? And you were like, no, but I'm not afraid to get stuck in, yeah. in any role if I have to, yeah. type of approach, which is what running a brewery requires, really. So. It's, yeah, well, any small business, you know, uh, and uh, that's pretty much everybody on the team is m- mucking where they have to, Yeah. you know, uh, get the job done. Get it done, cool. If you're in Manchester, check out Sure Shop, it's in a railway arch on, what's this? Street called Sheffield Street. Sheffield Street. You'll get a warm welcome from James and the team here. And um, thanks for your time today, James. Yeah, yeah thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Nice Cheers. one. Cheers, Cheers Matt. James. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>